Good evening. Welcome to the public comment portion of tonight's Finance Committee meeting. Um, at this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the first person who signed up to the microphone. You have two minutes to speak. Uh, Linda Pitti. Pitti. If you can just step forward and, and to the table. Good evening. Good evening. You can sit or stand. Okay. Because I've never done this, so. Do I start? Sure. Okay. Um, as I said, it's Linda Pesey. Thank you. Um, the following is a request for funding to assist and promote the Brockton High School bands. These programs serve as an opportunity for the students to develop skills and talents that will benefit them now and in the future. However, the band is in desperate need of funding to meet all student program needs, which include but are not limited to funding for instrument and band equipment such as orchestra chimes, Tiffany drums, concert and baritone tuba, marching percussion, concert jackets, marching band hats, UMass Band Day, uh, the possibility of performing at Disney World if they are accepted after they sent in their um, taping, perform at the Macy's Day Parade, upgrading the music library, upgrade their band lockers, supplement payments for student private lessons, drum major camp, Band for out-of-state competition, stipends for instructors. Adequate funding will enhance the Brockton High School Band's ability to recruit many students and promote a positive culture for students to achieve excellence. This is demonstrated when they performed at the football games and when the Brockton High School Wind Ensemble performed at the Metropolitan Opera House in Philadelphia and won first place at the World Strides Festival in April of 2023. They also won the Outstanding Band Award, the Education, I'm sorry, Education Award, and have been invited to the Gold Showcase next year, which will be in Nashville, Tennessee, or San Francisco. On February 24, 2023, the Enterprise newspaper had reported that our federal delegation secured $11 million in federal taxpayer dollars for various projects, including $3 million for the Cosgrove Pool Complete Makeover. In addition, the opera budget, 4.3 million. Left. I'm sorry? 15 seconds left, just letting you know. So there is um, 3 million from the opera which is not used for the Cosgrove pool. That'll freeze that up. The students shouldn't be held um, accountable for not being able to compete with the affluent towns that they are. Um, it's hard to say to them, yes, you've worked really hard, you deserve to go, but sorry you can't because of finances. On behalf of all the students, we would greatly appreciate if you could increase the funding. appreciate reviewing this request. Thank you, Linda. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you for coming in. Next. Next speaker is Michelle Henson. Michelle, good evening. Michelle Henson, 16 Osley Street. I'll get right to the point. Two things you guys all heard Attorney Bridges tell you about what her office has to do, all they have to know in municipal law. You heard it. You lauded her about all the work, but not one of you said anything about the salary of the vacant position of the admin. It's disgusting. It is below poverty. You can't live in the city with some of the salaries that are being paid to our city admins who work hard to make sure that you all can do your work and so that we as residents can come and get what we need. And as an old retired admin who knows what it takes, I want you all to be perfectly clear that if every admin in this city walked out, our city would shut down. And I'm asking you to act like you know. And I would like for you to one, re look at that position and do something about that salary. Second thing, let's talk about the homelessness. You all knew you knew with the moratorium lifted on evictions that it was going to grow. And you knew that would affect our students. And nothing was done. Nothing was put in place. We have empty buildings in this city. We have awesome nonprofits that we could partner together and get things done together. Not putting it all on you. We can work and step up, but we can't do it without you. 
So I'm asking leadership in this city as far as the homelessness, stop sending people that don't have a refrigerator and a stove to a place to get groceries. That's just so left. wrong. I'll give you my, I'm, I'm done. You drop the ball in some of these areas and I'm asking you to pick it up. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Jamal Braithwaite. Good evening. Good evening. Jamal Brathwaite, 18 Parkview Lane. Good, good evening, counselors. The city budget should reflect city priorities, and the highest priorities are safe schools and safe streets. On May 15th, the Brockton Public School Superintendent announced the existence of a school deficit of $18 million that required the employment termination of 130 teachers and certified staff positions. In order to prioritize funding of Brockton Public Schools first, can the City Council postpone the budget approval for two weeks and request the Mayor and CFO provide more information to the City Council regarding all available funds? Specifically, can the City Council request, one, an itemized list of all ARPA funding amounts and expenses to determine how much ARPA funds are left to be spent? It's not clear to the public if $3 million or $20 million remain readily available to be spent at the mayor's discretion. Secondly, on page 134 of fiscal year 24 budget book, there is $21 million in available funds, of which $19 million is in free cash. Can the city transfer $18 million from free cash to the school department to cover the deficit? If so, what impact would this have on the city budget? Thirdly, According to page 375 of the fiscal year 24 budget proposal, the statutory debt limit is $529 million. Can this be clarified so the council is aware, aware of how much more debt is available for the city to borrow in case additional funding is needed in fiscal year 24? Fourthly, can we also gain an update on the pension obligation bond to identify if we have a positive return or negative return for the $300 million borrowed in fiscal year 21 to seconds. fund the unfunded pension liability. The goal is to identify what monies can be used from the city to service over 14,900 Brockton Public School students. In summary, please postpone this vote until more information is avail made available regarding all available funds to the city, including ARPA funds, so we can have safe schools and safe streets. Thank you for listening and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Good evening. I'm just going to go look and see if anybody else signed up. And okay. Next speaker is John C. Williams. Good evening, Mr. Williams. One minute, sir. Hello, City Council. Good evening. Uh, my name is John C. Williams, and I'm here to speak on behalf of our schools and teachers, students, parents that are tired. We're tired of the excuses that keep coming down about where money's going and why we're not addressing the real issues that are going on in our schools with that money. <clears throat> this city's mismanagement of the Student Opportunity Act funds uh, that we receive specifically to close the gap between black and white students is egregious. This money was dispersed statewide because our country realizes that it disenfranchised its black citizens from education for centuries through anti-literacy laws, segregated schools, and low-funded schools with most black families living in impoverished neighborhoods. We received over $20 million in Student Opportunity Act money, and I hear a lot about ESSER money, I hear a lot about ARPA money, but no one's talking about the money that came in specifically for children like my children that are in our school system. <clears throat> we have sat here and I listened yesterday as we made excuses of why it was smart to invest in buses. 
We've invested in boxer tough sports programs. Those are long-term programs we invested in with short-term money. And if we truly say we, inv we care about people more than anything, their primary, left. then we should have invested in people first, specifically our pre-K, because that addresses early literacy. And from what I hear, we're cutting pre -K, that district-wide pre-K that we were instituting. And if that is a fact, it is egregious for our city to even think about it. We better find the money to fund that. But we need to find simple solutions to address our safety in our school. We had two stabbings. If I wasn't there for one of them, one of our children would have died, and we still haven't addressed that. Mr. Williams, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I have an email. I'll read it at the end. Okay. Uh, next speaker is, and I can't read the whole thing, Lindex Texera, and I can't read, I'm sorry, after the hyphen. Reyes. 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 Thank you. Good evening. Linda Texera Reyes, 127 Bartlett Street. Um, I'm here to talk about the um, specifically women and children in the city who for some reason get no attention unless it comes to domestic violence or um, they're unhoused or they're runaway. But just the average working mom, um, the city does not care about her. Um, Right now, I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for anyone else. However, I do know that there are many women who feel exactly like I do, that they're being discriminated against in this city. And, and I don't know why that is. You know, you look at the budgets. I'm going through the budgets now. I don't sit on the Women's Commission. However, the budget for the Women's Commission is $3,400. What the bleep is that? Like, seriously, $3,400? Did you know that women make up 52% of the population in this city? There are, let's see, there are, in 2017, according to the census, 1,473 businesses. Out of that, 182 were owned by women. Really? In a city where 52% of the population is women? You, you all don't find that wholly disgusting? I'm sure you have mothers, sisters, daughters, aunts. Like, you don't think that there's something wrong with $3,400 for 52% of the population? I do. Some of you women here, I'm, you might make more than that in a month. So, really? This is what we have for the whole city? I urge you to, to not make a decision on this budget until you revise it, because this is not okay. The money is just completely skewed. It's not where it's left. supposed to be. Thank you. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Jennifer McDenny. You can correct me if I had the name wrong. It's McDonough. Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to speak tonight, but I decided to go ahead and do so. I'm um, on the Parent Advisory Council for the district, and, you know, the parents we meet every other Monday, and occasionally with Mike Thomas. Um, we heard him out, you know, basically all the same things that he told you last night, he told us um, this past Monday, and we grilled him a lot, just as much as all of you did yesterday. And I urge you to um, fund his budget so that my kids can get the education they, can, they deserve and all of the kids in, this, in our city get the education that they deserve. I think it would be egregious if you opted not to fund this budget. I think a lot of your seats would be at risk in the next election because a lot of us parents will remember who voted against it. Um, and it's just really vital. Our kids need it. Something that wasn't mentioned yesterday was, you know, we just went through the whole COVID, you know, pandemic. And our kids have a lot of social, emotional, you know, needs at this point in time due to the pandemic, which, I mean, it's not just kids, but also adults who have suffered as well. So I hope that you do fund this budget because I'd like to see all of our families get the education that they deserve. Plus, please keep in mind that there's a lot of development happening in Brockton. 
I do work for the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities in the Division of Rental Housing, I mean, not Rental Housing, sorry, in the, the Division of Housing Development. And I know how many units are going to be coming online in Brockton. And a lot of those units are not just studios and one bedrooms. They're two bedrooms and three bedrooms. So you're gonna have a lot of families moving into the city. So it is seconds left. vital, absolutely vital that you fund this budget. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Shana Gilead, or Gilead. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I am a resident of Sharon, Massachusetts, but I'm a business owner in the Brockton community. Um, I chose to come here because my daughter's school system did not close during the pandemic, but Brockton did. And um, from Boston, I knew that there would be parents and families just like me that needed to get to work, so I opened up a remote learning program. Um, it's been very difficult with no support from um, I'm new to this area, so I didn't know where to find my support, um, and I've been reaching out to different people, but um, it's been very different. Um, working with Brockton Public Schools and working with resources that are already available, I'm licensed by EEC. Um, there were some budget constraints made against my program because I chose to open in Brockton, um, that I think that if we work together, um, they just made it where, like, if I open my daycare in, in the Boston, they would pay me $100 a day versus if I opened in Brockton or stay in Brockton, they're only paying me $66 a day to serve the same student. And so I think that, like, working together, getting to know you guys and what Brockton needs, um, that we could propose a preschool community garden. I put together a proposal. Um, I'm looking at the Shaw School. I'm also looking at 770 Center Crescent Street. Um, but there's even space, literally, like right next to the mayor where like if we were to propose some kind of free preschool or affordable preschool, there's tons of grants, there's tons of funding already available. Like um, I found even funding for um, an entrepreneurship program for the middle school kids. So I'm just looking to partner with Brockton to kind of like create some sustainable change and long lasting um, programs like the rest of the residents are requ seconds left. requesting. And that's all. Thank you, Ms. Gilliard. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wants to speak that did not sign up? You do have one you want to read in? Yes. I received a, an email a short while ago from Madeline Carnabucci. Hello, counselor. I thought you mentioned an email address on one of the hearings about an email address to send comments to, but I can't seem to locate it, so I'm writing to you as council president, and I know you may not see, that, see it at this late hour. Also, I think this would go beyond two minutes to read. Please share with the other counselors. I'm writing to support the mayor's proposal to establish an Office of Immigration Services. A city of Brockton's size and diversity would certainly benefit from having an office dedicated to welcoming and acclimating new arrivals to our city. For comparison, the city of Somerville, a city of about 80,000 and a population as diverse as Brockton's, instituted an Office of Immigration Services, I think in 2021, with its department head earning very close to what is proposed in Brockton, which has a larger population. They had a proposed budget of 668000 in 2022. Somerville is on the upswing economically with the Green Line extension, parallels with the South Coast Rail Project, and abundance of mixed-use developments. Nonprofits such as the Cape Verdean Association, Haitian Community Partners, Latin Women's Association provide amazing support and services. At first glance, it may seem duplicative to have this new office. However, I believe that it sends a strong message to individuals and the nonprofits alike in the city, when the city itself also puts its own resources into supporting those who contribute so much to our communities. You are welcome, you belong, how can we help? 
are the messages rather than having to rely on word of mouth as to what resources are available. With so many nonprofits in the city, such an office could also help with coordination of efforts to reach as many people as possible in the most effective way. Creating such an office now will pay future dividends. One finding in a recent study entitled, quote, The Belonging Barometer, The State of Belonging in America, close quote, found, emphasis added, quote, respondents report being treated poorly by local officials are more likely to report non-belonging across all life settings, not only in their local community, but also nationally in the workplace and even among friends and families. Thus, indignities experienced at the local level may undermine feelings of belonging in settings we would not have thought related. This could mean... Pardon? 20 seconds left. Okay. In investments in belonging at the local level, such as building up civil infrastructure, civic infrastructure to foster inclusive social contact and pluralistic practice, designing programs to support healthy intergroup contact, and bolstering efforts to address discrimination may have potential to reverberate. Thank you. Madeline Carnabucci, Brockton. Well, I believe that's all the people I have. Okay. Adrian? Unless there's anybody left in the audience who wants to speak. Anyone else who wish to speak? Okay. We're adjourned. Okay, we are adjourned. <laughs>